Excuse me, ma'am. I guess, ma'am, nakamute ka, ma'am. Yeah, nakamute ko na. So, I, I was already talking. <laughs> Again, so please go to your LMS and indicate your attendance there. And if you want uh, the previous lecture discussion, it's already available in the LMS. And if you want PDF or PowerPoint, it's already there. And uh, also for your attendance today, please indicate in the LMS. Also, so again, today we will be we will continue with our lesson in chapter ten. It's all about uh, radical reactions. No? So of course, you learned last time that in the formation of the radical reactions, now we were able to form. Uh, a radical is being formed by homolytic bond cleavage, and there is an energy associated with it when there is this homolytic uh, bond cleavage and there is homolytic bond formation. And uh, last time we talked about the geometry of our radicals, uh, alkyl radicals in particular, in a radical, carbon radical. No? And we've learned that for the alkyl radicals, it's similar, the structure, geometric structure is similar to what we have seen with carbocations, it assumes an uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals, and of course, they expect the geometry to be uh, trigonal planar. And the radical, katong unpaired electron on the alkyl radical, no, is situated on the unhybridized p orbital. And for that reason, we have discussed that um, any mechanism that can stabilize this radical. No, uh, could help improve the stability of our alkyl radical. So we've learned, we have discussed that in carbocation, you have the hyperconjugation, you have the electron donating inductive effect, and you have the pi electron delocalization. If your alkyl radical, for instance, here is adjacent to another carbon that assumes uh, or that uh, that has a pi bond or a pi electron, and it can be stabilized. So. Whenever there is a radical or unpaired electron, it's always unstable. And if there is any way that it can share, it can be stabilized or paired with an adjacent carbon, no? and it will gain stability. And for that reason, the trend of stability of our alkyl radicals is that the three degree alkyl radical is much more stable than the two degree, than the one degree or that of that one or a methyl radical. And again, you have this, the trend. And Again, the reason for that is due to the hyperconjugation. The more CH, adjacent CH that could undergo hyperconjugation with your radical, the same way that it could stabilize the carbocation, no? will also stabilize your uh, alkyl radicals. And then you have the electron donating inductive effect. You have usually here the alkyl groups no? that could help uh, stabilize the, al uh, the unpaired electron. And also if you have the pi electron delocalization, you usually see this one whenever your C dot or unpaired uh, or your radical is adjacent to a carbon having a pi bond. Okay, so for today we will be talking on the reactions of the generate tetrahedral chirality centers. So when a chiral molecule, what is that a chiral molecule? A molecule, of course, that is not chiral. Uh, we've learned that in organic chemistry, uh, in your first organic chemistry, that chiral molecules are those uh, centers or chiral centers, chiral carbon, that is bonded to four different group of atoms. So when you have a chiral, a chiral with an A before the chiral, it's not chiral. A chiral molecule react to produce a compound with a single tetrahedral center, what will happen? The product will be a racemic pore. So there are times that even if you start with a chiral molecule, the product will be in racemic pore, which means that you have a carbon that has a chirality center. One of the product will be a carbon that has a chirality center, meaning it can rotate plane polarized light. The, the compound is chiral. And of course, from before we've learned that the chirality can be uh, designated whether it's uh, R or an S. No? So if the product is being formed will be of equal amount, then we'll have the racemic form. Let's say you have a 50% R and a 50% S. So this kind of reaction this will always be true in the absence of any chiral influence on the reaction on the reaction, such as an in enzyme or the use of a chiral 
agent or, sol or solvent. So we will illustrate this with the radical chlorination of our pentane. So for example, here, you have your pentane, no? Of course, uh, in the previous discussion, we've learned that to predict our alkyl halide, no? Which is being halogenated by our uh, halogens in the radical reaction kind of mechanism, we have to identify the kind of CH or the hydrogen attached to your carbon. Is it one degree, is it two degree or three degree? And which kind of carbon is it attached to? So here you have a five membered uh, organic compound, it's all CH. And this on the left, on the right rather is the same. The CH on the right, CH3 is the same as the CH3 on the left. The CH2 here is the same here. Of course you have there. So you have three kinds of uh, hydrogen here. You have a one degree hydrogen, you have a two degree hydrogen and another two degree hydrogen here. And you expect your product to be an alkyl halide. Your chlorine will be substituting the hydrogen here to produce this one chloroalkane. And here we will have one chloropentane, which is a chiral. If the hydrogen is being replaced with chlorine here, of course, by radical reaction, you can have this to chloropentane. And of course, this to chloropentane, you will see in the structure you know that it, this carbon here is chiral. Okay, how do you know when it's chiral? Once your carbon is bonded to four different group of atoms, say, excuse me, you have R here, another R, another group, that's three, and the four is your hydrogen. You know? So it's this carbon is bonded to four different group of atoms, and you expect this one to be to be chiral, this carbon. So if we if we undergo the process of forming radicals where you have a plane, trigonal plane or carbon radical, no, and in the in the process of doing homolytic bond formation with chlorine, no. Uh, this we'll see later in the reaction in the mechanism that the chlorine can be added up and below the plane of the sp2 hybrid carbon radical. So it can be added up and below. And of course, you expect, you expect this kind of alkyl radical, I mean alkyl halide, but to be in racemic form. Okay. And because we produce a chiral center here and the transition state when we look at the mechanism is we pass through a trigonal planar sp2 alkyl uh, carbon radical okay and here you have can a hydrogen that can be replaced with chlorine here and you have three chloropentane and we although you can see here it's bonded to like one two three no but this is two group, the CH2, CH3, it's the same, no? So we don't expect this to be chiral. So only this is our chiral product. So you have three kinds of alkyl halides, but actually for this, we actually two obtain two kinds of stereo alkyl uh, radicals, which are in racemic form or which have different stereochemistry. One is R and the other would be S. Okay, so let's look at the mechanism again of the formation of this second one where we form a chiral, a single tetrahedral chiral to center, a chiral compound. So we start with a chiral, a chiral compound, and in one of the products, we actually produce a chiral compound. When you say chiral, you expect this one to rotate a plane polarized light in its pure form. But of course, when it's present in racemic form, you have an R and another, uh, in a, the other one, the other compound, which is the enantiomer of the R, which is the S. Now, if they are present again in 50-50% in the solution, in the mixture, even if individually in a pure state no, of the enantiomers, uh, they rotate plane polaris right in racemic forms, the net rotation will be zero, of course. But if one is in in, in enantiomeric excess and the other, then of course there is a net station the polarized light. So let's look at again to the mechanism. So if you remember, you have your carbon, you have your pentane here, and you have your dissociated chlorine already, halogen, you have a chlorine that, 
So it will attack on either of this second carbon. So the second carbon to the left and to the right are actually just equivalent. No? So it will either attack the left or to the right second carbon, it still be the same. Okay, so once it subtract the hydrogen on the second carbon, what will happen is that we will actually produce a CH radical. Okay, so you have CH radical, and then you have your kane, CH3, and then you have your CH2, CH2, CH3, kane, CH2, CH2, CH3, and the other one is CH3. Okay. So here you have again your CH. Okay, abstract mani ang isa, di ba? CH2 mani, abstract ang isa. You will have your CH na, and then you have your CH3, and then you have your CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay, so tulo na lang ka atoms na ninyo carbon will be bonded to. Okay? And because you have a homolytic cleavage, you will form actually in this process an HCl once this Cl dot abstract the hydrogen here. What is uh, the other product will be the alkyl radical. And here for this alkyl radical, it assumes a trigonal planar shape. It, this carbon utilizes the sp2 hybrid orbitals. And here in the lobe, you see this is the uh, unhybridized p orbital up and below the plane of this trigonal planar. Okay, so your fluorine, now this is a radical, this that there is so one electron here, can abstract another electron from your chlorine atom to produce your alkyl halide. So your unpaired electron here will abstract or, or your chlorine will form a bond here on this side or can form a bond on this side, okay, that will actually yield to an R and the other one with, this, with, with an S configuration. Okay, so for an achiral, a trigonal planar radical, we actually produce chiral compound, an R and an S in racemic form, which means that because the probability of colliding uh, this alkyl radical and chlorine is 50-15, and so you get 50% actually uh, one enantiomer R and another 50% of the other enantiomer. And here, if the percent of these two enantiomers is 50-50, you call this one to be a racemic mixture. Okay, so the explanation here is obstruction of hydrogen. Okay, so because we pass through this uh, planar, trigonal planar alkyl radical, and for that reason, again, uh, whenever you have a trigonal planar in one of the intermediates, no, you actually produce chiral compound that would be in an in, in enantiomeric form or in racemic form rather, no, 50-50 RNS uh, enantiomers. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, so we'll continue with. So if you look at the other products, here you have. The other two products, no, the one chloropentane and three chloropentane, no, they are a chiral again. I already mentioned why. You can see why they are not chiral. So neither one chloropentane or three chloropentane contains chiral center, but only the two chloropentane, the one that we have discussed, uh, will be obtained in racemic form. And two kinds of alkyl halides are can say that the C2 hydrogens of pentane are enantiotopic because enantiomers are formed by the reaction at each C2 hydrogen. So, can you carbon because you produce this racemic forms or this enantiomers? You can say that uh, yes. Well, I will okay present, mom. Ah, no, no. Okay. 
Wait lang. I will go to the kuan be. Ano naman yung sige mga kong kuan. Settings. Settings. Automatically present. Okay, so again, this uh, carbon here, second carbon in this example reaction, this carbon here, canide A, because it produced uh, the racemic form, two enantiomers, the R and the S, we call this CH, the carbon here, CH, to be enantiotopic because the reaction would result to uh, produce enantiomers and in particular in racemic forms. Now let's look at the generation of a second chirality center in a radical halogenation. Let us now examine uh, what happens when a chiral molecule containing one chirality center reacts so as, so, so, so as to yield a product with a second chirality center. So let's have an example. Uh, uh, let's say what happens when we have your S to chloropentane like this one, our product earlier. Uh, what happens to this when this undergoes chlorination at carbon three? So this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. So other products are formed, of course, by the chlorination at other carbon atoms. So you have to remember you now that when you do chlorination or halogenation reaction using a radical, it's not very selective to the particular carbon. <laughs> Depending on the number of moles of our halogen, we can actually obtain uh, many substitutions at, uh, at any uh, at non-particular carbon no? uh, substituted with chlorine. So let's happen. Let's see what happens on, on carbon three when this is uh, this product will produce another alkyl halide, no? disubstituted alkyl halides. So the products of the reactions are actually, okay, you have here, let's say this one is an S, no, the reaction. So it's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. And if it reacts on carbon three, what will be our product? If we start with the one enantiomer, no, the one enantiomer of the earlier reaction, and let's proceed with further halogenation reaction. So what will happen say, kaduhanga, on carbon three? If this is if this carbon three will further be halogenated with chlorine. No? So if this is S, we actually, this one, we can also obtain another uh, enantiomer. And our enantiomer will be, can either be, um, you have 2S, 3S, 2,3-dichloropentane, two, two, and you have 2S, 3R, 2,3-dichloropentane. Uh, so your first Enantiomer or chiral center is in the 2S. Katong first enantiomer in a 2S, in the 2S form, in the S form. And if the third carbon will react with another halogen, chlorine in particular, you know, we can actually obtain another chiral center, which will be in the 3S or in the 3R. So let's look at look at uh, the structure no? later we'll look at the structure so these two compounds that we have mentioned this 2s uh 3s 2s they are, are actually the astromers they are not enantiomers katong kaganina nga 2s and 2r is what we call as the enantiomers they are simply mirror image of each other Kani, the mirror image of this is the r uh, 2 chloropentane they are enantiomers but when this third carbon 
will be halogenated further with chlorine. No, we actually produce any. And these two compounds are, we call as the estereomers. They are not, they are estereomers, they are stereoisomers, but they're not very just learned that in the previous lecture. So what happens? They each resulted by substitution of one of the D estereotopic hydrogens, so carbon C will further react and uh, the two D estereomers are not produced in equal amounts because what happens, the intermediate radical itself is chiral and reactions of the two phases are not equal likely. So when they produce, when we have these D estereomers, two S3S, not two three dichlorpentane, the two S3 are not two three dichlorpentane, they are not produced in equal amount. Unlike katong earlier, bitaw nga we produce uh, 50 50 katong 2s and 2r na 2 di 2 chloropentane okay but this this time katong second halogenation na they are not produced in equal amounts why is that because the intermediate radical itself is chiral and the reactions of the two phases are not equally likely so what happens if the radical reacts with chlorine to greater extent at one phase than the other, and that is the presence of the chiral T center at C2 in the radical. So let's look at here. Yeah, no. Okay, so here you have your 2S, your 2S here, 2 chloropentane in the S form. You get the S form. Is it 3D in the S form? You have, you can view from this part, no? So hydrogen, you have 1, 2, 3. So this is S actually. If you view from this, can you? chlorine will be on your right. Give you from here, chlorine will be in your right, in your upper right, so it will be in your upper left, and this is your can you? So you have one, two, three. So this is in the S. So you have S the chloropentane, and let's have a radical halogen, Cl that to react with this. So it will abstract the hydrogen here to produce your CH can you? and CH that be up here. Okay. And you can see here that what we actually obtain is a trigonal planar radical. Of course, you have your radical here. You have your CH3, CH, Cl here. And then you have your C, dot. And this is your dot, your radical here with an arrow. Uh, one electron uh, placed in the unhybridized p orbital. And then you have your CH2, CH3. Okay. So here you have, since you have a chiral center, this one is a trigonal planar radical, which is chiral because one of the carbon actually is chiral. So if it reacts on this side, the chlorine to form your, of course, your chlorine that to form your alkyl halide, may you get your uh, 2S3R. And if you if the chlorine will react from the other side, no, of course, uh, you will have your 2S, 2S, 3S uh, stereoisomer. And the two, they are not mirror images. You see here, they are not mirror images. Because mirror image, panacea, no, sicanes, HH, CH3. They're not mirror images. And they're actually the stereomers. Okay, so this chiral, chiral radical, this one, can react with chlorine at one phase and the other, this phase, and again, this phase, and these two compounds are just streamers and they are not produced in equal, equal amount. Each product is chiral and each alone will be optically active. You will see this one, the CLCL are on this side, no, and uh, oriented towards you. And this one, the CLCL are on the opposite side. So for this to be this, the enantiomer of this should be, uh, CL should be on the left side and H should be on the right side and oriented towards you. 
Okay, so they, it's very clear. I hope it's very clear to you that these are the streamers. So which part I uh, didn't say no. Uh, we just have to say that the percent that this one and the other one will be produced is not of equal amount. One uh, will be will be produced in a greater amount than the other. They are not equal because here the structure here it's uh you have a chiral radical. So I just want to emphasize this one. You couldn't predict however, you couldn't predict, predict however which part or which phase no, from the trigonal planar radical, chiral radical, no, will produce uh at a will produce an alkyl halide at a greater amount. You cannot easily predict. But we just have to say that canin kanishang mga stereoisomers. Uh, new chiral compounds being formed no, are not produced in equal. So consider the chlorination of S to chloropentane at carbon four. Write the structural formula for the product showing three. Makita na? naman siya. Every time, every time I close ko kay ako magong gibutang kay dapat whatever screen that I open or should I say ako ginabutang sa ako kaya dapat makita siya, makita siya. Anyway, so here is a practice ten point nine. Uh, we will have to see what is structural formula for the product if instead of carbon three. Okay, if instead of carbon three, we will look at carbon one, two, three, it's in carbon four on the chlorination. I think it's easy and you can easily predict now. You can do practice for this. Uh, this application. This is an application of stereochemistry where we do reaction. Let's consider. So here I'm gonna upload this one of your problem set. I can practice for that. Consider the brumination of butane using sufficient bromine to cause. Dibromination after the reaction is over, you separate all the dibromine isomers by gas chromatography or by fractional distillation. How many fractions and what compounds would the individual fractions contain? Okay, so you have your butane, no? you have four carbons, and of course, you only have. Two replaceable uh, hydrogens, no alkyl halides. Kana kung uh, only alkyl alkyl bromide uh, monobromination lang. But here we here it stated it's dibromination. So which means after we substitute one of the uh, hydrogen with our halogen, we have to do another mole of bromination. So that's dibromination okay paris katong after you do one of the carbons to be replaced with halogen you do further let's say carbon one no pagka next niya will be carbon two inana or carbon one next start and then pagka next it will be another brumination still on carbon one so inana ang um, brumination or halogenation reactions so how many fractions, question, how many fractions would you obtain and what compounds would the individual, individual fractions contain? So here we actually get many uh, alkyl halides, alkyl, I'm sorry, alkyl uh, bromo butane, okay? So you can have one, two, or one, one dibromobutane. And we can actually, the isomers of dibromobutane, we can actually separate that one with gas chromatography, or we can separate that one with fractional distillations. Hopefully, in the laboratory, you know, we can do fractional distillation or even just a simple 
distillation, etc. So the question, how many fractions would you obtain and what compounds the individual fractions be? Before that, again, you can see that there are two replaceable hydrogens. You have your CH3 and you have your CH2. On the other side, it's the same. So for monobromination, lang, you can actually have your kani, replaced. One of the hydrogens here will be replaced with bromine and this will be replaced with bromine. But after producing this, and after producing this one, we have to further uh, do further do brumination, wherein you already have one bromine here, and we do another brumination in this. Or you have another bromine here, and you do another brumination here. It's the same. And then you can do brumination here already, and another brumination in this. Brumination here, another brumination here. Okay, like that, and, and so on. So let's say you have this. First, uh, carbon to be brominated with Br. And you can actually get Br. And then another one. So I should. Okay. You can have this. And so you can have this. And you can actually have your. So you have your one, two, three. And so you have your one, two, three, uh, four. You have your bromine, right? Very small. And then you can actually have that. You have your bromine. And you can have your another bromine here, right? Or you can have that. And you have, oh, sorry. You can have bromine and another bromine. Of course, that's another mole, another mole of that. Okay, so first brumination, second brumination, you actually have dibromination process. Okay, so this is for the first carbon. And here you will have, and what happens? You will have one, two, three, four, and what happens if you have on the second carbon, one, two, nakabayla in the ring. Okay, dairata, and then you have, so if you have, you have CH3, CH2, CH, okay, you have hydrogen. CH2 and hydrogen. Okay, so when it abstracts, now of course, when you have your Br2 and that, you will have your Br dot. Remember, you have your Br dot and you can have your uh, that and another one there. Okay, so you have your H dot. Sorry. And you know, Br. We are, there is this homolytic cleavage, of course. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ay, wala na ko na-share na food. My goodness. Well, na Naka-share ma'am, pero wala naglihok. No, no, I'm missing paint, actually. So, nakita na ninyo. Okay na, ma'am. Thank you.